All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our September 5th, 2023 regular scheduled council meeting. Good evening, council, audience members, and our administrators that are here tonight. Um, Ms. Turner, if you would call the roll, please. Yeah, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. Very much, and tonight's invocation will be done by Councilman Bond. Our dear Heavenly Father, we uh, again just thank you for your love and your grace to us. This opportunity we have to be here, just ask for your wisdom, your understanding as we make decisions for our city, um, that you would just help us to find the right way. We just pray that you watch over our military, our first responders, their families, watch over our families as we're away from them. Again, just be with us as we uh, discuss the matters of uh, business for this city. In your sense of the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, moving on, we need uh, minutes on the August 21st, 2023. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadblock. Any discussion on those minutes, Council? And when you're ready, Ms. Byrne. All right. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. And it's accepted 7-0. Moving on to the city manager report, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. Uh, small city manager update for you. It's dated September 5th, 2023. Uh, discussion topic, nature, nature work pool grant. We had this discussion at the end of last meeting when Mr. Kitko brought forth some additional information regarding some additional costs with that uh, potential project. So um, as I stated at the last meeting, we're going to look at some things and then we'll have some uh, the, uh, more in-depth discussion at the September 18th meeting. And that's when council should have a, uh, hopefully have a good indication of which direction we want to go. The reason I state this is because I did reach back out to Nature Work Grants uh, in the event that it gets reverted back to the gazebos. And then what kind of time frame did we have to uh, adhere to should we change the scope of that project? So um, she did not give a deadline. She just ad advised to do it in a timely manner. So that's uh, so let's be prepared to have that discussion um, at the September 18th meeting. Um, Clark County Public Health update that is attached. Um, so if you have any questions on that, just please let me know. Also, too, we had uh, while I was away on uh, leave, we had some floodway letters get sent out. Uh, very small amount, a number of people got those. I know Councilman Bond was one of those. So they had sent an email uh, that went unread, and they just put um, Howie Kiko's name on the bottom of that letter. Well, we contracted out for that study. They should have really put the contractor's name on there, which is Burgess and Eiffel, and had those questions directed to them, but they failed to do so. So I'm saying it just for the record, should anyone get one of those letters and have any questions, just let us know, and we will get you in contact with the appropriate individual. Councilman Bond, did Mr. Thobe get a hold of you from mm -hmm. Choice One Engineering? Yep. Have, are all your yep. questions, concerns mm -hmm. taken care of? Yeah, I think so. Great. Awesome. Yep. Thank you for that. Uh, potential additional discussion topics. So I sent out an email today to council. I know it's really short notice. This just stumbled upon my inbox. Um, so this is, I don't know if anyone had saw it or not, but this is a liquor permit for uh, Penny Lane. So my, in my assumption is she went ahead and just applied for that early with the anticipation that it was actually going to make the ballot. Unfortunately, there's not enough signatures collected. Uh, so it won't be making the ballot. So I think it's just say my advice is say no hearing warranted. Now we can get it off to the appropriate state agency. But I will be asking for a motion to uh, have the clerk sign uh, potentially with no hearing wanted. You want that now? Yes. Second. Motion on Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay for said motion. I have a quick question, Mr. Bridge. I don't know if you can answer or Ms. Eggleston uh, on that on that matter. No, I have Ms. Eggleston answer that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever find out since they were short on 
uh, signatures, could that those signatures be carried over to the May election? No. Thank you. The answer would be no, sir. Sir. Another one from Mr. Eggleston. How many, how many will we short? Uh, yeah. mm. yep. right. Good call. When you're ready. <clears throat> Councilman Roadwell. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That's the seven zero. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the city manager report. Um, this is that time of year again, so I just wanted to apply building Ryan Council. We got some pretty big upcoming legislation uh, that we're going to have to discuss. Liability insurance renewal. We already had the kickoff meeting with those uh, with USI. Health insurance renewal. Uh, ordinance to accept the codification update. We should have that to you here probably, hopefully, within the next month, month and a half. And then to our 2024 operating budget. That's all I have for the city manager report. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Mr. Vice Mayor, sir? The Rite Aid property is out of control. Oh. Sure. There are weeds growing better than halfway into the sidewalk. There are weeds growing taller than I am. I talked to Sandy, the manager. She said she can't even get them to replace light bulbs. And there was one weed toward my end. I thought it was poison sumac. The people tell me it is pokeweed, both of which are toxic to animals and can cause unpleasant reactions to people. So anybody walking down Main Street, if they brush against that, they can go into Rite Aid by Calamine Lotion. <laughs> so I'm going to go to CVS by Calamine Lotion. <laughs> Maybe it's a marketing tactic on there. Yeah. We need to do something. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I saw your Facebook post today. Um, as I've shared with council, this is something I've been battling with Rite Aid for quite some time to keep their property up. Um, we will reach back out. Uh, the manager on site is wonderful to work with, but I think her hands are being tied by the upper echelons of her organization. So we will reach back out. Hopefully, we can do a courtesy on that. If not, we can see what we can do to abate it uh, due to a, a, a public safety issue. But again, it's something that we have been battling for quite some time with Rite Aid. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I don't really have a question for the manager. I have a comment uh, concerning Rite Aid. Uh, somebody said that they was closing. I forget who it was. I thought it was somebody on council, but it may not have been. Uh, I was up there the other day and asked them if they was closing, and they said they was not, but some in Columbus and surrounding areas closing. But that store, as of right now, has not been marked for closure. So I guess it's going to be around for a while, and maybe when they get rid of some of these other stores, they'll have some money, they can get rid of them weeks for you, Dale. <laughs> I talked to her today, and yeah. she said that uh, there's a store in Springfield across the hospital, about the same volume she has, yeah. but the store in Springfield has a very high theft rate. Yeah. She has virtually no theft. Yeah. So she doesn't think she's on the street. That, uh, and and that, that was what I had heard too, that they're looking at the stores that has a theft rate that's costing the corporation a lot of money. And uh, those are the ones that are being targeted, I think, to be shut down. That's all I have to say, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I just have one, Randy, um, question slash comment. On kind of on that subject as a whole, our code enforcer, I know we have a new, uh, what's his name again? I'm sorry. Brian. Brian, Brian. thank you. Can we change up the way we get reports? I would like to see, if possible, and I know this is probably asking a lot, a weekly report. And I'm, I'm not saying detail as far as how many, like, you know, what he wrote, but, you know, there's, you know, when we come through town, we all live in different parts of the town, so we all see a lot of different parts of the town, but we never know what's been done as far as, how, is, is this house that you've seen that's been a continuous problem on XYZ Street? Uh, you know, is it in the process or anything like that? And, and without calling you and, you know, banging on your door and you're busy enough, you don't need us bothering you anymore. We're calling Brian. I mean, what, I mean, what would be, or open any other ideas about getting just a little bit more information as far as what was done? Sure, sure. Um, so when we were had me as the acting planning director, I actually took those reports out of the manager report just because they were timely and consuming. So we can have them put those back into the manager report. It'd be similar to how um, our old planner director used to be. 
be a note section where he just gives you know what he's been doing update and then too more importantly to have like the uh list of uh exterior property maintenance he's give out quantifying them, like 42 high grass you know three uh, three nuisance abatement stuff like that that way it give you guys a little bit of indication of what's going on and quite frankly it needs to be back into my manager report anyway for myself to see on a regular basis as well okay. so that's what we can do that way every two uh, every every month you guys are getting an update like you get from any other department right yeah okay. great. sure yeah, sir. Uh, can we get the addresses on that report too would it be possible sure it's all public information okay this, um, I thought it was, but I wanted to clear it with you. So you want a list of addresses from code enforcement activity or just want a general list? Code enforcement activity, what's been tagged, what's been looking at, what, what they're looking at, what's, you know, just whatever he does as far as code enforcement on addresses, I think that would be helpful. Because like the mayor said, we don't know, you know, we all live in different parts of the town. We don't know if, if this property over here on XYZ Street with 4th Street is got grass as high as anybody looked at it and said anything you know and we drive by it and see it and we're wondering why isn't something being done and again to echo his sentiments we shouldn't be calling you and saying hey what's going on with this address you know i'll just stop there yeah uh, we'll talk to brian and see what the the uh, software can export as far okay. as the data tables and then we will work on something for sure Okay. I, I, was, I mean, if council's okay with that, I would like to see it. If, and, and, you know, if they want to just send us an email, that would be fine. As far as I'm concerned, that way we have it uh, maybe a weekly thing or a bi-weekly or something. Yeah. Again, I think the best way to handle this would be a monthly report like we do with any other yeah. department. And then any questions can be directed to me through email. Um, and if you have additional questions, feel free to shoot me an email. That's that's what I'm there for. Okay. But I I, I think the best way to move forward would be the monthly report. If council wants something above and beyond that, then we're welcome to make a motion to do a weekly report or whatever, how you see fit. Um, but that would be up for council as a whole to decide. Right. No, I think starting off at least with the, the back of the monthly would be fine. Yeah. Sure. But just and I know that you're and you've always been great about looking into that stuff and just hey. I don't think anybody's like to call and say, hey, what's up with the grass on 202 XYZ yeah, Street? For yeah. sure. He is working. He's done a really good job with the current software we had about manipulating and how we run the reports and what it can do. So I'll circle back with him. So we did have to add some tabs. It's basically a glorified Excel sheet when you export it. And it wasn't grabbing certain things, even though we we're telling it to grab it. So I think it's a possibility for the addresses. And if it is, we can definitely do it. We just got to figure out how to do that on our end. Okay. Yep. Great. Right. Anyone else? All right, thank you, sir. Yes, thank you for the report. Mm -hmm. All right, and moving on, uh, give your report on tonight. Comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, or all the above, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address, and please try to keep it to five minutes. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I, I did already mention it to Brandy. 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 My dog, Brandy. I get a little confused. Um, on Prentice, a few houses down from us, I mean, the grass is as tall as me. And I know the city's been mowing it a lot because I think it's a rental, but I don't know why. It's Johnson grass. That's why it's so tall. You know, it's really, really tall. So I just thought I would mention that, that it's awfully tall. And also, when I asked about the park, he said that they're uh, there on Scott Street, that they're going to have to cut back on a lot of things because the budget is cut. And I just haven't heard anything about it from council or about the property that's the new, store. Which, the new call park? Come back for what? Cut back on the park on Scott Street where they're going to do the basketball court and all that kind of stuff. Janelle, you were talking about the shutter out here when I said cuts. We're yeah, talking, you said the park too, that it was uh, coming in a lot say, higher and you didn't think you'd be able to get that house next door. Okay, then, and then, then they had to cut back a lot on the shelter too, but we haven't heard anything about that, about what, I just think that'd be nice for the public to know what what's going to be different about the shelter. So just a comment, I would just thought I'd bring that up. Right. I didn't mention anything about Carlisle Park being budget cut. She had asked about a house over there, then she had asked about the shelter house, and that's when I said, you know, it came in over budget with how he's communicated that with you guys, the council about slot, uh, cutting the parking lot in half, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what she's talking about where the 
it came in over budget. I don't know. If I confuse you on the Carlisle Park thing, it was not it. Mm -hmm. This came in higher. Yeah, this came. Yeah, this I came in higher. I know this did too, but I had heard another thing about parks. From the she did. That was months ago. How he brought it up about doing a. It was supposed to be a full size, but then it didn't. It came back. We had to cut some of that back. So that was discussed with yeah, council. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So council. He she he discussed that at council okay. as well. Yeah. And what was you asking about the new shelter house? Is what all is going to be different? Yeah, I just had not heard more about it. Um, I think he, the last, I, the last I talked to Howie, he said it'd be open at some time in November. He's expecting a ribbon cutting in November. Yeah. But I just thought the public would be interested in what they said it was going to be like, what it will be like. It'll be, from what I understand, about 100 square feet smaller than this, but it'll also have a small kitchenette, you know, a sink, refrigerator, freezer, and a warming station mm -hmm. of some sort. I don't know if it's a microwave or a small stove or what it is exactly. I don't, I don't think Howie knows exactly. Really, the only the biggest difference was the number of parking spaces. That's really what it was. We cut well, it no, down. But she, she was wanting to know what, what the new building would be like as well. Oh. It's going to be 100 square feet smaller than this. I think that's what he told me. No. Uh, bigger than this. I think it's about the same size or a little bigger. Yeah. Unless, they, it's like, unless they went down and I don't know about it. I think maybe he's referring to with the kitchenette, the open space will be a hundred. Oh, that makes sense. But with the kitchenette area, it'll be the same or big. That's yeah, that makes sense. So, all right. Thank you. Anyone else? Alrighty. Moving on, Miss Burner, if you would please. <clears throat> Resolution 2023-15R introduced on August 21st, public hearing in action tonight. A resolution adopting the 2024 through 2028 capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Council? So moved. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor. Second. Second by Mr. Cook. All right. <laughs> And an explanation to this ordinance. Uh, first off, this will be amended um, when we get into our 2024 operating budget discussions. As we know, there is a three month deadline that we have to submit to CIP before we can uh, approve the budget. So this is just really step one into it. There's some departments that I still need to get with, namely, since we took over Haddock's field, I get to get with those representatives. And then two I already got with the police uh, sergeant. There be maybe a, p a potential police car cruisal. Uh, but again, we just really wanted to get this in for like an early taste and then also to meet that three month satisfied uh, but a charter requirement. So our operating budget can be affected before the first of the year. Council, any questions? When you're ready, Ms. Turner. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. That is accepted 7 0. Moving on to our ordinances, we have Ordinance 2023 50. This was introduced on August 21st. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance accepting a bid for an exclusive franchise for the curbside collection and disposal of residential garbage, refuse, and recyclables in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Council. Motion by Mr. Lindsay. Second by Mr. Roadwell. This is a Republican council. Should have died. Should have died for life. Well, there's already a motion on the floor. No, a motion. So this is the, is there, is there a first and second? Uh, yes. Yeah, I got the So right an explanation of this ordinance, this would award Republic the trash contract if passed. No, this no, one's for Republic. Republic. And the oh, next one's Republic, for Republic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got ahead of myself. I think. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, 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 no. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, you can still just vote for that. Or we, or, or we can rescind the second in the motion. Hmm? Or we can rescind the second in motion. Who, who seconded it? You did? You rescind it? Yes, I sir. rescind my motion. Okay. So now is it die for lack of motion? Correct. Right. So I just knew how to stamp it. Gotcha. 
Thank you. All right, next one. Ordinance 2023-51. This was introduced on August 21st. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance accepting a bid for an exclusive franchise for the curbside collection and disposal of residential garbage, refuse, and recyclables in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. This is Ms. Yeah. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Cook. No explanation of this ordinance, sorry. <laughs> Is it right? Explanation of this ordinance. Uh, should this ordinance pass, this would award the uh, our new trash franchise to Rumpke. And Mr. Mayor, if I do so say something, I already expressed my, I, my viewpoint on this with Ms. Rohr. What they have done for our citizens is phenomenal, and I think uh, you're going to be very well received. And as a manager of this city, I know a lot of people are going to benefit from the reduction of their, of their hauler service bill. So for that, we very much looking forward to becoming community partners. And again, thank you. Anyone else? I'll bring this up again every time this comes up. I'm not going to dictate to our residents who they have to hire to do the treasury. Good. Thank you, sir. Service. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if Randy can answer this or not. How will the switch between waste management and Rumpke take place? So if I've been in contact with Ms. Rohr, and we are going to be waiting, we're waiting on a date for waste management and a hard removal. Um, if we don't get that, then I'm sure Rumpke will help us out remove those containers. Um, and then I'm also working on, and we have a, a early kickoff meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock, so I'll be sharing with them um, some Excel databases I have for address lists to see if that's something they can use. Um, uh, that's what I can speak of. Um, Mrs. Rohr and Mrs. Mr. Cobbs here, if they want to speak on anything else. Yeah, I heard you said we're meeting tomorrow morning to go over the transition um, and making this as easy and as seamless as possible. Um, so I've put together some documents and some, um, some mailers and brochures that will be sending out to residents learning about the change. And um, hopefully, and since service is going to remain on Mondays, it, like I said, it should be seamless. Um, and if it was, Mm -hmm. sure. you know, I had people asking that they were on senior citizen service with waste management, would it automatically go? It, that, yes, but it's all dependent on the list we get from waste management. So hopefully, um, it is a good actor of us. They worked with us in the past on that and provided that, so mm -hmm. hoping that that's the case this time as well. So, okay. Yeah, you want to ask the volume of senior <laughs> Mr. Lindsay? I, I think that the lady already answered my, my question before I asked it. But uh, regarding waste management, they will give you the list. Normally, they, they work with other companies. Normally, they share that with the, with the city. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, and then the city will give it to you. And you already have that list, correct, sir? No, no. I have a, a list from our utility software. So I'm still waiting on that list from waste management. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. You want us? When you're ready, Ms. Brown. All right. My second was Mr. Cook? Correct. Okay. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? No. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. That passes six to one. All right, just one second. So I didn't want to say anything until after we voted, but uh, again, uh, you guys were at the, the last meeting and we brought this up, and I, you know, I was one of them, not going to lie. It was obvious. Mm -hmm. I, I would have never in a million years thought if we put it out for bid, it would become any cheaper. Not because you guys were you know, worse or better or any others were worse or better, but just with the economy, I just would have never guessed it would have happened. So I, you know, put my foot in my mouth and thank you guys because that was, I mean, that was an impressive bid. Mm -hmm. That's that's just great, so thank you very much. I too was one of those guys. What's that? I too was one of the yeah, guys. Yeah, I, I mean, I just didn't believe it, so. I didn't. So. Thank you for making me eat my words. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> and back to you, Mr. You, you can have one. 
All right, the next three are read only. So we have ordinance 2023-52, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on September 18th. An ordinance amending chapter 1460 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle for the purpose of addressing donation bins. Ordinance 2023-53, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 918. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with Aaron Harder for sludge removal. Ordinance 2023-54, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 918. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $35,000 for the purchase of a new street sweeper. Um, other business, additional city business is open for discussion. All right. Uh, when Mr. Bridge made the agenda at that time, we did not need an a, uh, executive session. But tonight, we will go, we'll need to go to executive session to discuss uh, the appointment of a, of a city employee. So, Sorry. I have a... Uh, question I assume it'd be for the city manager seems to me like I remembered once upon a time that when the water meters was updated there was something to where if they have excessive usage it would notify somebody and I've had phone calls over the past about it it wasn't very it wasn't that far out of normal, so I dealt with it. Uh, I did get a phone call. The uh, people was out of, out of town on vacation, and they used like 21,000 gallon of water. What uh, in, in the past was there anything we was that the city did to help accommodate that, a payment plan or or something or reduce the sewer or anything like that? Can we don't know where the water went. Where the water come from? I have no idea. Did they take pictures? Pardon me, sir. Did they take pictures? They wasn't home. So there's no evidence of a leak when I got back? No, not inside the house anyways. Well, they've got a big problem somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, what's it? If you don't mind, when we're done here, just give me the address. Then I'll have. I have to look it up. <laughs> well, can you give me a call tomorrow, maybe? I that way, you can it. have Colleen look at it. It takes it takes some it takes a few days for our system to recognize the continuous leak. Yeah. But they should have saw evidence of that somewhere. But get with me afterwards. Yes, we can credit. How that usually works is to say that um, you left your hose on. If you provide proof of that, we can credit the sewer because we're not treating that. We'll have to charge you for the water. But since we're not, since it's not going down to your sewer, we're not treating, we're not charging for that. And there are payment plans we can get into. Council just mm -hmm. actually, I think last year, changed the water code to allow more payment plans. We need to have max of two or three a year, and that's mm -hmm. now went away it's as needed. Okay. So yes, there are ways to help, but let's get her in the mm -hmm. right department tomorrow, and then let Colleen Ray take a look at the system, the, the data that sent that. So, so I am correct in my thinking that if there's excess usage out of the norm that something is supposed to show up somewhere on well you gotta have proof. You, I don't yeah know. you gotta have proof of that excess use I mean, yeah. you can say it's excess use yep but i just filled up a pool or watered my you know massively large yeah water. i asked them if they had a pool yeah. so they said so. Uh, in fact they was out of town mm -hmm. sure. for a week or 10 days something like mm -hmm. that sure so i guess what they told me okay i'll have to find out well, give us a we'll take yeah, give us a call tomorrow and we'll we'll jump right on it. I can do that. Thank you, sir. No problem. And thank you, sir. And uh, Mr. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Cook. I want to say if nobody else has anything, I was going to make a motion. <laughs> Anyhow, I believe council was uh, informed of the letter that the city manager got from a businessman regards to the donation bin and oh. a couple other situations that were apparent around his business. I guess I went up and looked at the mess of the bin. Yes, it was a holy mess. Uh, I will have to concur that I think that that thing needs to go. Second factor, I believe he mentioned that uh, a neighboring business seemed to have some homeless people hanging around and creating a problem. 
I guess my concern would be what's the possibility of having a deputy possibly swing in there once every couple hours and just walking through the business. If there is homeless people in there, or people not doing business, then let's get them out. Uh, well, does the business I don't happen? I don't think we're doing the city any good by letting this element become a problem in the city. So I think if, if deputies will do that, then maybe we can alleviate any and all problems in the in the future here. You're saying that unless I wrote it a different way, I don't think he I don't think he had a problem with with homeless people. He said there was homeless people he, in the neighboring. He did a little enforcement on a neighboring property. Okay. But you're saying to have police? Uh, just have a deputy swing in that neighboring property. It's open to the public 24-7. Uh, it can be a, I guess the word is a uh, homeless shelter awesome. if somebody doesn't keep an eye on it. Uh, I did also look at the area behind the library i did not find the uh, encampment that was addressed but it may be there oh that's at the ballpark bill um i'll read i'll read mr miller's e mr mr max email again and i'll get the cops over there uh, i'll just re revisit it first now as far as the encampment oh there was one back there it was a big library? one. It was a it was a big one. Yeah. So I got uh, Brian, our code enforcement, worked with the Clark County Sheriff's offices. They got video of it. Um, so now they're working with the property owners to get the brush down to make it more visible. Um, but that was a really big one. I don't want to say, I don't know if it's sophisticated. I don't know what I, I don't know if sophisticated is the right word. But it was it was enclosed at four walls. It had stuff back there. Did Did you see the pictures? I asked the pictures. You were, gotcha. You, you were familiar with the other situation. I'm going to read. I'm going to revisit the email okay. from Mr. Miller from okay. from Mr. Max. Okay. Mr. Max. Are you good, Mr. Cook? Thank you, sir. A follow-up question, uh, Mr. Bridge. The uh, can can the code enforcement officer contact the owner of that shopping center? I thought that one time there was a no loitering signs posted. Uh, I think they're gone now or something. They may have taken them down, the, the people. But uh, maybe we can get that posted, reposted up there if the landlord wants to. Uh, I understand he lives someplace in Indiana. I don't know where. Which place you're talking about? I'm talking about the shopping center over the, the laundromat is. Uh, it's, man it's owned by one person but managed by a company, I do believe, in California. In California. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. the, uh, but if we get loitering, no loitering signs put up there again or back up or whatever, then that will give the police a, uh, a uh, outlet to remove people that's hanging around not doing laundry. Well, if it's not our property, we can, well, this we is can ask. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, if, we yeah. can, if we can ask to get that put up mm -hmm. to help control uh, a problem that, that some people see as a problem, which I, I don't know, I'm going to stop there for a station. But uh, the, uh, you know, if, if we could reach out you or him or the, the code enforcement officer or somebody, you know, to see, ask if they could put a no ordering sign up. We can't do it. It's not our problem. So, not a problem. Okay. Thank you, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, if there's nothing else, Miss Eagleson has something. She's waking me down. <laughs> um, <clears throat> several meetings. Ago, I had brought up the fact that the west side of the piece does not have a sidewalk, and I thought how it was going to check something, but it never got back with me or the last week. But I have been informed that there is a gentleman in a motorized wheelchair that has to go out into the street to get from Kennison to Lake. Okay, if I remember correctly how he said he was going to look at some stuff, and I thought we are going to discuss it at the next pool meeting, but I could get that confused with something else. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember saying he'd look into it. I don't know when he said he would get back with us. Well, I hadn't heard back, and I was contacted today saying that the guy in the wheelchair is having to go out in the street to get between Kennison and Lake. Is it the homeowner that lives in front where there's no sidewalk? I mean, the, the people who are contacting are they the ones that live where there's no sidewalk? No. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Maybe just put a bug in his ear to remind him for the next meeting. Sorry. I have a question for Councilman Eggleston, Councilwoman Eggleston. Uh, does that, the person in the wheelchair, do they live in that area? Yes. Okay. The only reason I'm asking, there's a uh, <clears throat> somebody in a motorized wheelchair. I'm not sure where they live at, but they go down our street, down North Henry all the time, and they're right in the middle of the street. They will not move for any vehicles. He lives over on Orth. That's why I thought they lived, but I, 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 I'm not positive. But I think they do live. He does live on Orth. Sometimes he has somebody with a bicycle with him. Right. And they will not move. In fact, the guy with the bicycle would deliberately run in front of vehicles. I've almost hit him twice. I mean, he'll be coming down on the right side of the road like he belongs. I'm on the, uh, the left side, and I'm on the right side, and he'll get within 20 foot of me and cut right in front of me. I've come close to hitting this guy. And if I do, I'm not calling a medic. <laughs> Councilwoman Eggleston, yeah. is he coming like pees this way and has to go across to get to this side? Like which way is he? Is he coming down like pees this way? That come to this way to get. From what I understood, he was coming off Kennison on the P's to get to Lake. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> oh, one more quick subject, oh, yes. since we well, do have a deputy here, there, Mr. Mr. Bridge. I've well. seen the email you sent out. Have they been doing what you requested as far as Smith Street? Um, I just had a meeting with Lehman on that, so I will check back with Lehman okay. on that. I was just um, curious if yeah. there was any effectiveness coming from. I know he called, I know Mr. Lehman spoke with the uh, gentleman on Smith Street. Um, but I'm sure Mr. Lehman is having them do something because I know how Mr. Lehman operates, Sergeant <laughs> Lehman operates. But to say yes or no, I can't answer that. Yeah, I was just, I mean, but, but he, I'm assuming he got the message out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> something else I brought up before, and how he said he was going to check something and hadn't heard back from him. Um, I had emailed out to everybody about a month ago a copy of an article from 1956 stating that mm -hmm. the picture of the curve on South Main and how they had tried to contact the state. The state wouldn't do anything. The city wasn't doing anything. So the issue with that curve is not a new problem. It goes back prior to 1950. So, and I emailed out today a link to an article from the plate us, Cape, Cape Coral in Florida. A woman had the same issue, drunk drivers coming around, hitting her property, and the city stepped up, put rubble strips in, and also lit signs and curb signs, and she's amazed at the difference it's made with the drunk drivers. And I think one needs to do something. It's been an ongoing problem for well over 70 years. All right. Any discussion on that, Council? We have lit speed, uh, speed limit signs. We have a lit curb sign. No. No. Can we? Hey, it's there's a lit speed sign coming right up on the curb. So it's 25 miles an hour. We have a lit turn sign. Right I mean, we can look into that. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Signage doesn't, I'm not trying to be negative by any means. I'm not. Um, I think council needs to look at other methods other than signage. Signage just doesn't work. You can have 25 mile posted everywhere. People are still going to go 30, 35. 
you can have the reflector curve signs up there, people are still gonna go through them. These are usually drunk drivers. These are not able-bodied people. I feel for Miss Eggleston. I would be nervous to in our house as well. We need council as a whole to take action to direct us on this particular matter. Um, so I don't know if that is you guys talking about it in a work session or a special meeting and having us look at some information and bring it back to you guys and make that decision. I don't know what the best alternative is, if there is a good alternative. Um, but, um, and it, it's not just Miss Abelson's house. There's other houses, there's a business on the pit. There's another house right next door to hers that's now getting hit. You know, I think that we should take a look and see what our options are um, before it does get to be something that is bad. You know, or somebody gets killed. Yeah, so, um, but that's something that council as a whole needs to direct us at and take it from there. And we, we, we'd be more than happy to help out whatever way we possibly can uh, and look at some alternative solutions. Um, but that's where we're at with it. <clears throat> the, uh, the myth I may share. Uh, Ms. Eggleston has brought this up numerous times to, our, to this council. Uh, I can only assume she did it to previous councils. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. The maybe an eight inch speed bump would work, hmm. or a two foot wide ditch, <laughs> or rumble strips, something to wake them up, get their attention, and, and, and a, uh, some type of signage to, to let them know there is a curve there, to, that it isn't a straight shot through there. The, uh, I don't know if the state of Ohio would be dictating that since it's a state route. Uh, maybe if council would so agree, have Howie look into it and get back to us at the next meeting. And if council would like that to happen, I'll make it a motion. Second. And Mr. Cook seconded. What's the motion for? <laughs> have Howie look into, uh, not speed bumps, but rumble strips or signage or something to Get. You would have to. You would have to make the motion to direct Mr. Bridge to. Well, okay. can't, we, we okay, can't direct, him. We can't right, direct correct. Him. Uh, okay, the city manager to have the assistant city manager, service director, to look into it, <laughs> or he can look into it himself if he wants. Is that? How do you want me to word that? The council can't direct anyone but me, so I'm just making sure that right. the city manager look okay. into. Okay, so we like direct that. the city manager to. To have somebody look into uh, rumble strips or alternative methods to get people to slow down on that curve outside of parking a deputy there 24 7. And that would be a little expensive. You concur with that? Okay. So we have a first and a second, Mr. Mayor. First by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Cook. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Any discussion on it? Or? Can I yeah, was there any, get two cents? I mean, there's been what, three accidents in the last how many years? Year and a half. And one many, was ice, one was, one was a drunk driver. Drunk driver. Uh, one was a semi. One was ice, two drunk drivers. I'm not condoning drunk driving, and I'm not saying I may have driven drunk in my life um, or not or not um, blinking lights and rubber strips don't stop me um, or wouldn't, wouldn't really have had any effect on me uh, my thing I mean there's thousands and thousands of cars that drive they take that turn daily weekly monthly yearly and I'm not I'm not Saying the accidents and, and, and what you've suffered in the houses around have suffered isn't not but that you know on you know uh, making it in light of it, but I'm just saying it's such a small percentage that to look to invest city resources to something that may or may not fix the problem. Um, I mean, I'm not. A, I mean, we we like Randy said. I mean. First thing I would propose is change the speed limit, make it 25 as soon as you cross over the bridge. Being just as a state route, 
would we not be taking any funds out of the state highway fund to do any repairs and or alterations to that? I don't think you're going to be able to lower that speed limit. Well, this is what I asked council is maybe entertain the motion and I say this because there's it's data. We're going to be analyzing data. So we should be able to look at that crash data. Uh, estimated speed should be part of that crash report. And at that point in time, we should take the average speed and be like, right, if someone's averaging, whether they're sober, drunk, whatever the case may be, 35 to 45, what is the best preventative measure for that? Is it bull yards? Is it nothing at all? Is it speed bumps? What, is, what does that data look like for the average crash? What does that average crash look like? To answer your question about state highway funds, we'll probably have to fund that out of general fund because the state highway funds are usually earmarked for certain things. So if we can use it for road repair, that's one thing, but I'm almost positive that can be used for wages and stuff like that. Um, and then the gasoline tax is also earmarked as well. As far as changing the speed, since we own and control both sides of that state route, we'll have a lot more leadway. The issue we have with changing the speed by RD holder is the fact that we don't control both sides. So if we go through the motion, that at least give me some um, direction to go and get some basic information back to council. And then based off that basic information, you guys can decide if you want to go further or not. That's all I've got. Do, do we want to shift gears here and have a work session and bring a person in from State Highway and find out what we can do on this? I, no, I don't think so. Not yet. My opinion is, is I think let him dig up the, the reports, the uh, traffic study. Is that what you were saying? Crash data. The crash data. Mm -hmm. And then go from there if we need a work study. I'm not saying not, but I, I think it's premature until we find out what he finds as far as crash reports. Good motion. He said we have but, I was, but I was going to say the same thing, Dan. I'm not making my leader situation big. I agree, but it's, it's frustrating. But I also don't see a rumble strip stopping a drunk driver from not making a turn. I, I just don't see it. Did that, did that article by chance, did it, did yes. they, no, I'm saying did they give factual like the breakdown before and after? No. No. Okay. So. I mean, what's the goal count? Is the goal count? I mean, we can never prevent a wreck. No. What we need yeah. to prevent is that wreck going into private property. That's what we need. To that, do. I mean, I think Ballard's are going to be your best option, but they're, they're, they're but they're not pretty, and I'm sure you don't want them in your yard either. I'd rather have them in my yard than a truck in my living room. Right. So. And, and, and another thing I, I think council needs to look at real hard is so far nobody's been killed by an accident on that curve. And I mean, yes, what, what I mean. There has been a fatal law on that curve. There's been several fatal accidents. a pedestrian or in the vehicle? No, a motorcycle. <clears throat> I'm, I'm talking about maybe a kid or something walking down the street, or a couple walking down the street with their baby or whatever, and and somebody runs over and kills them. Does, I know myself, I would not want to have that on my conscience if there's something out there that we can do to prevent it. So I, I think spending whatever it takes for the research and then bring the information back to us, I think is a, is a good investment for, for the public and for life. You know, I don't think anybody on this council or in this city wants to see somebody get killed just because we wouldn't take action and do something if there's anything we can do. We may find out there's not a thing we can do. The state may say, no, you ain't touching our route. You know, I don't know, you know. So if they can find this information out, either the city ranger or, or the service director, then I think we should at least get some information for our next meeting if they can get it that quick. I don't know. All right, so do we stop the motion on the table? Yes, motion and second, yes. Right, right. <clears throat> Mr. Vice Mayor. One thing that's not gonna hurt would be more aggressive enforcement there. Yeah. I don't want to turn this into a speed trap town, but we have a situation where <coughs> there have been numerous incidents directly attributable to speed. So we have a deputy said they're a little wrong. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll look into that for sure. Yep. Okay. Mr. Mayor, if I may follow up. Sir? I, I know at one time there was a deputy that we had in town that certain times of the day <coughs> they would sit there at 
I don't even remember the name of that little park there. Hensley, Hensley Park, is it? Yeah. Hensley, Hensley Park. Hensley Park there on 230. They would sit there. I don't know how many tickets they got to write because they come through there and they're talking <coughs> and then they write them a ticket. That, you know, that alone will slow people down once the word gets out that, you know, there, there's a deputy sitting there. And it's not the same time every day. It, it varied. And, and invariably, they, they caught uh, people and stopped them, which is a deterrent in itself. But then when they're no longer sitting there, then people just do what they want, you know. Um, that's all. I'll show you. Anyone else? Right. When you're ready, Ms. Berger. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Pass the 7 0. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Mayor. There's no other business. I don't, if we want to go and uh, come back from. Executive session. I don't foresee any business taking place afterwards, but you're still are welcome to wait outside and come back when we're done. Mr. Lindsay. I move to break rules of council to go into executive session for the discussion of public employee. I'll get it out in a minute. Second by Miss. Hey, you what? Then you amend the rules of council. He just did it. He okay. just said break rules of council. To amend the agenda? To add an executive session okay. for. Mm -hmm. I'll catch it on the video. I didn't hear, I didn't hear the, who the second was. Ms. Eggleston. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Graham. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 7 0. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Move to go into executive session. Second by Mr. Roadwell. Motion by Mr. Lindsay. Okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Oh yes. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I was thinking. I didn't hear my name. <laughs> All right. And it is not that you, time yes. on the wall. Yes, I did. Okay. okay. All right. Let's take a quick breather and then we'll go into executive session. One broke the mayor. Mr. Grimm. Move we go out of the executive session back into regular session. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Lindsay to go to regular session. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Except 7 0. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwald to adjourn. Mayor adjourned. Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roof. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Accepted 7-0. Motion to adjourn. <laughs>